everyone. I'm Colleen with Awaken Catholic, and this is Awaken the Saint. There is an idea in the world that religion and intelligent thought are mutually exclusive, that faith is the enemy of reason and science. Today's saint, Anselm of Canterbury, was a man of profound insight, whose life and works serve as a strong counterpoint to that misconception. Anselm was born in 1033 in northern Italy. He lost his mother early in his life, and he had a strained relationship with his father. At 15, he hoped to enter into monastic life, but the abbot he asked was afraid of provoking his father's ire and refused him. He was instead pushed into schooling in Burgundy, and then in Normandy. When he was 27, he finally was able to become a monk as he originally wanted. He also befriended Lefranc, the abbot of Bec, who appointed him as prior only three years after he donned the habit. Anselm proved himself a quick learner and a deep thinker. As early as his appointment to prior, he started to write a broad collection of works on theology. He wrote books and essays on subjects such as free will, reason, and the origin of evil. Anselm followed in his friend's footsteps, becoming the abbot of Beck when Lefranc became the Archbishop of Canterbury, and then being elected to the seat of Archbishop himself when Lefranc died. He actually pleaded against this appointment, saying he was unfit for the job, but his objections were ignored, and he was made Archbishop of Canterbury in 1093. He wasn't given much time to adapt to his new position, though. King William Rufus, who had been instrumental in putting Anselm in the Archbishop's seat, began to show his true colors. He wanted to exert authority over the church to gain power and wealth, and he demanded that Anselm offer for tribute in exchange for the seat of the archbishop. Not only did Anselm refuse, but he also urged the king to allow the vacant seats of church offices, which had intentionally been kept empty, to be filled. This angered Rufus, and he tried to take away Anselm's authority, even going so far as to try and convince the pope to remove him. Hoping to consult the pope himself regarding how to deal with Rufus, Anselm departed Canterbury. The pope was supportive of his plight, but the archbishop was unable to go home because the king had declared him in exile. During this time in Rome, he continued his writings, completing his most well-known book, Cur Deus Homo, also known as Why God Became a Man, which discusses the reasons for the Incarnation. Anselm remained in exile until Rufus died in 1100 and was replaced by Henry I. At the start, Henry was just as uncooperative as Rufus, insisting that he be paid tribute. But the archbishop eventually won him over. By 1108, the king trusted Anselm enough to ask him to serve as regent during his absence from court. However, Anselm's health began to fail and he died the very next year. He was canonized in 1490 and named a doctor of the church in 1720. Anselm was not content with blind faith. He spent a large part of his life exploring the reasons why he believed in God. Like him, we are called to not just be men and women of faith, but also people of sense and intelligence, always seeking answers to life's most important questions. St. Anselm of Canterbury, pray for us.